This is 90.3 KEXP and worldwide, KEXP.org. I'm Stevie Zoom, and we are ready for some live music here in our studios. From Great Grandpa, welcome all of you to KEXP. Welcome return, I should say. So thank you for being here. Their latest album is Four of Arrows, and I think right now they're going to play a couple of songs from that. So if you'd like to go right ahead, please do.
Here on KEXP, it is live music from Great Grandpa. Again, thank you for being here today, and thanks for returning. Uh, they were here performing on our studios a couple of years ago, and now back with a new album, Four of Arrows. And before we kind of talk about the change in the music, I know there was quite a few changes that have taken place 
with the band members and just kind of life in general with things kind of progressing in a forward fashion to uh, deal with things and then try to keep a band together as well. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Although everything's back to normal now. Everybody lives in Seattle. Everybody's back. Yeah, we're all back. The gang is back together now. So some of the members were in Milwaukee? Yeah, Carrie and myself both lived in Milwaukee for a year and a half, yeah. Okay, and now you're back. Yes. Okay, all right. So with this new album, um, there's a lot of, uh, more of an expansive sound, a lot of different um, musical styles going on and instrumentation. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that came about? Yeah, I think Pat can probably speak a bit <laughs> to that. Um and his and Carrie's time on their honeymoon in, in Milwaukee and sort of exploring new things. Yeah, I mean, I guess being apart, uh, it's harder to have a band practice in the basement, um, which is sort of the way that we used to do things. And so uh, we just sort of wrote a lot of the music kind of in our apartment and when we were traveling, uh, mostly just like on acoustic guitars. Um, and uh, I think we always dreamed of this band, like as a whole, dreamed of doing something a little more ambitious and uh, larger in scope. And, uh, you know, our early stuff was just sort of, I think, more of a reflection of what we felt comfortable doing at the time. Um, and so I think it felt very natural that, like, this is something that we had always wanted to do, but never felt like we had maybe the time or the resources or felt comfortable, like, yet as a group. But we've been playing together for a long time now. And uh, I think we were all ready for, you know, a challenge and to, like, really show our true tastes and influences, I guess. I think the band sort of it started out as almost like a side project sort of thing, and I think we just sort of felt like we had to kind of run with that sound that was zeitgeisty at the moment or whatever, and just sort of, it was like a, you know, I don't know, we felt like it was fun to be like slacker rock and, you know, just embrace that, but then we're sort of like, well, this isn't necessarily like what we really love, and I think we wanted to reflect those uh, <laughs> influences and make something that like really is something that I think, as a group, we all feel like truly speaks to like our musical taste, you know, whereas in the past, I think all of us enjoy that kind of music, but does, it wasn't necessarily like our group's true uh, spirit, I guess you could say, yeah. Well, it's all kind of a building process. Yeah, of course, yeah. 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 Now, I noticed on the, on the album, there's several studios that are credited where you did the recordings, and it looks like it was over a six-month time period. Mm -hmm. um, was that just a matter of getting people together, or did you sort of re-record things along the way? Yeah, a lot of that. Um, we uh, we started working on the record on January 1st of last year, um, and we got into the Way Out studio that was in Woodenville. We were in there for a week uh, doing pre-production stuff. We just had we had Pat and Carrie, and then um, I believe you guys went back for a little bit. Um, so we had these like skeletons of things that we had worked on in the studio. They went back. We sort of like had these things just mulling over until uh, March, which was our like two weeks of main tracking in that studio. So that was our main time together, kind of like working through how these songs were going to sound and sort of um, that space was really inspiring for us. It was really beautiful out there in Woodenville and um, we were kind of secluded and uh, it was very, it was just like a beautiful sounding space. It just felt like somewhere where we wanted to do a lot of acoustic things and, um, a lot of piano and, um, we had Abby Gunderson play strings and so a lot of really cool stuff happened there. Um, and then after that, it was pretty much a mad dash to get it in done, uh, by June, was it June 1st? Thanks. Cause that was our label's deadline. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we had, we had Pat and Carrie, like here and there, um, Pat, you can, <laughs> you have that story about oh, when gosh, you were yeah. in a hotel room <laughs> giving mixed notes at like, yeah, three you know, in the morning. three in the yeah. morning. Uh, I guess special shout out to, uh, to Mike Davis and Sam Rawson, who are the two people we made the record with. Uh, Mike is the producer and Sam was the engineer and, um, we had a, a lot of other help as well along the way, but those two really, uh, just dedicated like so much of their lives and their souls to that record and like sleepless nights. And yeah, there was one night uh, where the, we were f finishing the mixes cause the mastering was scheduled for the next day. And I was in LA uh, for a work trip and uh, I was in this hotel and Mike and I were calling each other back and forth at like, you know, between the hours of like midnight and like four in the morning, I had to catch a flight at five in the morning to go to the mixing session. So we just stayed up all night. So he would send me a mix and we'd be like, okay, what about if we try this, we try this and he'd be like, all right, here we go, I'll be back in 20 and they'd send a new mix. And yeah, they were uh, true warriors and like, yeah, I mean, really the album is as much theirs as it is ours and they put so much 
probably more work than any of us did into it. Uh, so we owe them a great deal of credit, yeah. So at least he kept you awake there so you could make that ungodly early flight. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I think I, I don't think I slept. Maybe for like 20 minutes or something at the very end of the night, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. It uh, doesn't matter the line of work. Uh, things have to come together when there's deadlines. Yes, yeah, yeah. it helps sometimes. <laughs> so you guys had a, a good fall tour, I believe, and are going to be heading out this spring. I mentioned uh, Tree Fort. That's happening at the end of March over in Boise, and then you've got a lot of other shows lined up. People can uh, across the country can find uh, if they'll be nearby or in their city uh, on the website or on the label website, Double Double Whammy. So think, again, thanks for being here. A couple of more songs from the new album. Yeah, yeah. thanks so much. Thank you for having us. You're listening to music from Great Grandpa here on KEXP. Getting ready for one more song, I believe. 
and another one from Four of Arrows, their uh, album that came out in October. To make you hungry, lie soft along the contours of a dream while you dream. All and see. Tried to run these hands on this time, but lost it at the edges of the range. Wise enough to know the difference, but not enough to make a subtle change. Positions fold violent on the outskirts of peace. English Garden, performed by Great Grandpa, live here on 90.3 KEXP. Thank you for being here, and uh, all the best on the upcoming spring tour and travels. And a big thank you to our engineer, Kevin. It's 90.3 KEXP, Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.